I'm Stefan Bauman, and welcome to another podcast. Today, I have an interesting and fascinating interview with Virginia Lago. She's one of my artists over the past years, and she's gained quite a lot of success on Instagram, on Facebook, by marketing pet portraits. She's a wonderful personality and a wonderful artist. I asked her about this pandemic that we're going through, being locked down in the houses, and asked her how is that influencing her marketing, and she actually has a surprising answer. So sit back and listen into this fascinating conversation and interview with Virginia Lago. I see you a lot on Facebook and things. Uh, it seems like every time that I go on Instagram, there you are with another dog, another portrait, and now you're doing portraits of families, I see. Of families and people because the word of mouth and people like my style and then they wonder if I can paint a face as well as a dog and then I'll say, yeah, I, I, I can paint a face even though I don't um, market the faces. Because yes. my my branding is the dogs, I will always say yes. I can paint <laughs> yeah. the faces. And now I'm even this year. I'm gonna start a new series with the dogs, with the owner. Wow, that's taken on quite a different look. Uh, I know that when we first, because you first started with me with coaching. Yeah, I think I started with you two years ago. Two years three. ago. I think it was more like three years ago you started with me coaching. Um, what caused you to give me a phone call to begin with? Stefan, I needed a direction and I needed someone to keep me in on a path. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to paint. I knew I wanted to paint better. And I needed someone to guide me and hold my hand and keep pushing me forward. And I was already familiar with you on YouTube because of your painting videos and your advices and, and your, what I like the most about your videos actually, that you are a inspiration and you know so much and your videos are to the point they cover a lot of different aspects and, and doubts that pe people have. And they are short. They are fun and they are easy to listen. 15, 20 minutes, 30 sometimes. And mm -hmm. so I was already super familiar with your videos and you were already inspiring me until one day I saw that you coach. So I'm actually sitting in front of a building getting ready to go into to teach an art class. And I had a few minutes and I said, you know what, let me call this number and I'm going to leave a message because I never thought it would answer the phone. Yeah. So I <clears throat> called you and you answered. You answered the phone and I talked to you and I was like, Stefan, this is so cool. I know. I your voice by heart. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, uh, most people are re surprised when I do answer the phone. Um, yep. Yeah, that's the yep. first thing that I do. And uh, sometimes it shocks people, though. Sometimes I'll have them, they'll actually just hang up. They'll like be, oh my God, it's him. And they hang up. Um, so, but. Uh, I thought it was awesome. So, so you picked up the phone and called. You know, I remember back when I first got a phone call from you, you were doing, at the time, portraits, weren't you? Yes, that's correct. I was focusing on faces, which is something I always liked. I always liked to study faces because I think on, in the painting world, it's one of the most challenging ones. And I like a challenge. You do. <laughs> so I want to learn how to paint faces. Well, you were, you were at the time, I, you know, pretty heavy. I mean, when we first started coaching, and, you know, it's been a couple of years. I've had lots of coaching students since then. Um, there, were, there were a couple of things going on uh, financially with you and some things that were going on, uh, you know, where you, it was almost like you felt like you really needed to make painting a business. A lot of times when I get phone calls from students, I use you as an example because I go, you know, Virginia is just a rock star uh, with, with her business. 
uh, painting and she's painting full time. And I know that our first phone call was more or less about, okay, I've got, I'm doing portraits and now I want to go into get, making money from them. And we were talking about you doing some political portraits and some portraits of judges. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? I do. I do. I remember. I even offered to paint the mayor here in my city. And so I was really into trying to get leads to paint faces and maybe famous faces and things like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What was it like with me back then? Because I, I kind of remember we spent a lot of time scheming, trying to figure out which avenue we were going to to go down for for quite some time till all of a sudden you had this this new idea um stefan i think with everything in this life we it's a trial and error and we have the ideas and we have to tackle it and we have to try and you would give me weekly assignments in in things that I could try here, try there, try that Facebook group, uh, go in on your city, uh, try the stars, uh, the celebrities, and, and so on and so forth. And I did. I spent the whole week thinking of ways to market and, and, uh, and sell and create leads. And, and then he, this worked and that didn't work. And, and we, like with everything, we kept adjusting. Mm -hmm. And in a month, things change so much. You grow, your painting skills get better, your ideas change. But what you helped me so much was with the brainstorming and try to tackle this this week, try to check on that next week. And, and that's what I was doing. I was really uh, in tune with you and agreeing with your ideas and working on it yeah I, I like a student i know i know it's 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 amazing how intimate coaching can be um i mean i re even remember you calling me uh, a few times you were visiting your mother in brazil isn't that where you're from mm -hmm. and yes. uh you know you were you were uh, uh in brazil making your coaching calls so yeah it just kind yeah. of proves you you don't have to be at home to do the coaching calls you could be anywhere in the world exactly. um so, so tell us a little bit about your background. When did you start painting and what kind of training did you have uh, where you were born? I was born in Brazil. I was brought up speaking German because my grand, uh, my grand, great grandparents, uh, my grandparents, I'm sorry, uh, immigrated to Brazil from Austria. So I grew up speaking German, went to a German school, and then I started, you know, I learned Portuguese, obviously, from Brazil, and I moved to U.S. I married an American that was raised in Brazil, and I did all my paperwork in Brazil. I came to U.S., and I had my green card back then in 87, and a few years later, my husband and I decided, let's... Uh, conquer this country let's be mm -hmm. part of this let's embrace this country uh, this this culture and then i got naturalized and now i'm a brazilian american i have two citizenships and i've been here for 33 years wow you know i i'm yeah. i'm always amazed uh you know coaching you was just always a wonderful you're always upbeat and i oh, was watching too. i was watching a lot of your facebook uh, because you do stuff on Facebook. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, on Facebook, I have almost 5,000 followers. I almost reached the, the limit on Facebook. And I have daily postings also on it. But ultimately, how I use Facebook is I connect with people. I love people and I love um, to be talking to them and getting to know them. And I now lately have been doing some live uh, videos. I go live on Tuesday nights and I have like at least 30 people watch me, watch me paint. Yeah, I, I know. I, I watch that. What I always love is that you start off with a glass of wine. And I think that's, <laughs> oh. I think that's, I think that's really sweet. Um, now, do you have do you have a uh, uh, 
uh, two Facebook accounts or you just keep everything going on the one Facebook? I only have this one with yeah. my name. Yeah. Virginia Lago. And then I have the Virginia Lago art, but I don't really like it, to be honest with you. I like the more personal one. It's Virginia Lago. It's almost like you can go on my page. It's all about dogs and about painting and about drinking wine and being positive and fun. I, you know, you can go on through my photos. I think it's almost like you, Stefan. You know, you're not an open book. You're so approachable and you're so real. And, well, thank you. And I like to be real. You well, know, and... you know, we when we were crafting some ideas, because uh, I've learned a lot along the way with coaching students like yourself, a lot of times Facebook comes up and everybody says, oh, I need to open up a, a business account with Facebook. And I always tell them, no, actually, I think people are more interested in your life. It's more autobiographical. Mm -hmm. And I think you're more in touch with Facebook. And when I start students off in Facebook, I tell them, don't open up a separate account. Use your family Facebook. Just kind of watch out that you don't get too political or anything like that. But I think... Correct. I think since since painting is autobiographical, uh, it's it's more organic. And when you go onto your Facebook, you not only just see your paintings, the just posted, but you see the process of them. Your your clients are interacting with them. Periodically, we get you at at a gallery or a showing or something, and you don't get that organic feeling on Facebook in the business section. You just kind of finish a painting and post it, and finish a painting and post it. Um, and uh, obviously you hook up your Facebook with your Instagram, don't you? Yes. Yes. Instagram is completely different. It's a different, um, I think it's almost like a different age group. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, Instagram is, is younger and it's faster, but I love it the same way. And I do some live uh, videos on that too. Uh, so yeah, I use both. I love it. I, I have people reaching out to me from all over the world. I already sent paintings out to Australia, to Netherlands, to England, to Brazil, you know, obviously, but Germany, I've been sending paintings out, you know, and I know how to ship it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I tell you, I tell awesome. you, things have changed so much since we first started. Um, because, you know, we went from the portraits and, and, you know, you really kind of got burned out real quick. And most people do that do portraits because let's face it, dealing with people and their egos is difficult. Most of the time when you do portraits of somebody, it's so serious. It's such a serious co a commission and there's a lot of pressure. And mm -hmm. somehow or other, we started working with the animals, these pet portraits that you do. You know, you were really a fabulous portrait artist. And when you went over to this dog, uh, do you do cats too or do you just do dogs? I do cats, but uh, cats people are also a little bit different <laughs> than the dog people's. Cats don't come around that, man, that, that much. Yeah, yeah. But if, it, if I need to paint a cat, I'll paint a cat. I can paint horses. I can paint all kind of, and I, I paint anything. Actually, I cannot say that I paint anything because... I'm not really good at landscapings or flowers, for example. I like still lives, but my still lives have to have a touch of fun. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't care for painting flowers. I don't care for painting landscapes. And so I think this is the beauty of it. You, everybody will find their strength. Well, and I adore being around the animals. Oh, yeah. And dogs. I mean, come on. Dogs are just Especially amazing. Dogs. Yeah, dogs are like, you know, um, there's there's so much I just want to talk to you about. Going through, and I'm just going through our histories that we had, mm -hmm. we had some interesting conversations with going people and we started doing these pet portraits. You know, I talk about the three disciplines that an artist has. It's first thing you have to have desire. And you have had desire from the first time you said hello to me. And you had said, I want to be an artist. I want to be an artist. I don't care, you know, what, what, what it is, but this is what I want to do. And we were going down for the portraits for a while. And that, we were also doing some of my exercises that, mm -hmm. that you have yes. to do to learn how to do highlights and shadows. And then we went, then we went from there and you started doing the pet portraits. It just didn't, it just didn't happen for you real quickly though, did it? No, 
not at all. Well, I guess, Stefan, to be honest with you, it did. But it took a while for me to realize that maybe I should try to paint a dog. Mm -hmm. I have never in my life painted an animal mm -hmm. until three years ago or four now. And it all happened after I was coaching with you for a year. I woke up one morning and I'm like, because you exposed me to paint this, paint that, try that, paint this. And, and one morning I woke up, I remember to this day, it was like, okay, what about I try to paint a dog? And I reached out to a group of friends and I asked them to send me pictures of their own dogs so I wouldn't use a Google picture. Yes. And so I had these unique and, and, and photos from my friends and I started painting these dogs just to, to learn. But people started buying them. They loved it. And, and so that's, it, and then it never, it never stopped. Yeah. I continue painting, and that was it. And I remember, I remember that we did, we did scheme, and there were, there were times that you were like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not quite getting this week any, any orders. What can I do? And this is so we would, we uh -huh. would brainstorm. Remember those times? And you would have like little contests. You would say, okay, I'm going to, to have a contest, and and have uh, first 10 people that submit a painting will that I feel that is it was almost like a an animal mm -hmm. contest you had to qualify to have yes. you do one so everybody submitted their 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 animals at that point and then yes. you you had you got to choose the top 10 and they had the wonderful uh, opportunity to actually purchase that painting that you chose and yep. and you were very clever yep. You, that's, that's the one thing that I think that most artists don't get is that you have to work it. And, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, the three, uh, legs of the stool that artists stand on is, you know, first I said it's desire, you had desire, and then you had, you have to have discipline. You have to, you have to be willing to paint even if there are no orders. And I always remembered, you always had your homework done. You would always find something to paint even if it wasn't an order that you were filling at the time. And then you had tenacity. You know, when, when, when things got a little quiet, you would stir the pot and you would, you would do what you had to do. Mm -hmm. Correct. I wake up in the morning, the first thing I think is, what am I going to do for my business today? And if I'm not selling, I'm painting. Mm -hmm. And I'm creating something else and I'm studying. And I'm painting whatever dogs, whatever my face. Do you do and that? I that? I paint my face all the time. Oh yeah, you too. You do have a series of of your portraits. I remember those too. Um, yeah, the Monday mood, the Tuesday mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think you were doing those mood paintings in the transition uh, prior to your to your pet portraits. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. And you're always looking, you're always looking for something. And the thing is, you've got to be tenacious. You've got to figure out what it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. Because there's a, there's a unique style to how you paint um, your pet portraits. And I would, I would advise anybody to go look you up on Facebook and, and see how you go about painting them. They're quite different than a lot of the people that are painting portraits. They almost have, first thing, you are the only person I know that can truly, truly get the likeness of the dog. I mean, full disclosure oh, here. Thank you, you. Full disclosure, you painted my Shasta, my little Border Collie. And mm -hmm. I tell you, it, it, is, it is almost frightening that how, how real she looks. Um, it's not that you paint them, well, you paint them very well, but you capture the essence. It's not just a painting of a Border Collie. You, your, your talent is to really understand the portrait of the, of the animal you're painting. I mean, you, that is just uncanny. It's just amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I think it must be the love. I really get into the, that face and understanding the, the, how this, this, it's not a photo. Mm -hmm. You have to put in 
the real sculpture, the anatomy, the contours, the eyes, obviously, but it's 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 above and beyond copying a photo. Mm -hmm. I think I get I get really into it. And how do you, how do you deal with your your clients? I mean, you they send you a photograph. Uh, do they do they mostly reach out to you? Uh, how do you how do you cause an opening for them to 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 order one? And what kind of correspondence do you have with them in that process? It's so interesting you asking me this, uh, Stefan, because I find it fascinating that I will hardly talk to anyone. Really, everything is text. I use Messenger the most. Or Instagram people love to text. Really? My message, and I am on it. I have my phone with me 24 7. If someone wants a price and, and wants to talk about painting their dog, I'm on it. I answer, I drop everything. I want to talk to that person. I want to know about their dogs. I want to see pictures. I fall in love with the faces of their animals right away. Uh, especially when it's in memoriam you talk to the person first of all you talk about the dog yes and, and what kind of what kind of conversation is that i mean yeah it's 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 interesting i mean if, especially when you're working through text uh how do you get a connection with that person well, uh, if someone says, Virginia, I, uh, I see your paintings, they're magnificent, uh, I would like to know a little bit more, and first thing I say, wow, thank you so much for reaching out to me, and um, well, what do you have in mind, and then if they want the prices, I give them the price list right away, I have a price list on my phone that I copy paste, yeah. my prices are not a surprise, I'm an open book. Mm -hmm. I will negotiate with people that have multiple dogs, obviously, mm -hmm. but I think my prices are very reasonable and they are all over the place. And so if you are paying that much, the other person is paying the same much. Yeah. So, so I there's would like to, yeah. There, I, and, and, go ahead. And, and then we, we talk about if, if it's a diseased dog, then I, I'll ask about the dog and, and people love to share about their dogs. People love their pets. And I, I love it too. And I like to learn and I, I get, I bond. Yeah. And then we talk about, and, and also the only thing I do to start a painting is I'll collect a deposit. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about picture, we exchange pictures, and I would advise you what will be a better picture um, or a best picture to make a portrait because you're investing after all. So I've been more picky lately with a good photo. Yes. So Because obviously the success of a painting is a good reference photo. Okay. And then I will crop, I fix it on my computer, and then I... I time lapse i film me painting i take pictures of the photo and i connect with my client and i keep sending them photos of the development of the, the painting so the person knows what's going on and they know that oh she's working on my pet this week and that's how it goes and then when it's done, I take a picture of the finished painting and then I will seal it. I, I wrap it really pretty. I have a whole way to create an experience on unpacking the painting. Mm -hmm. I have notes and I have stickers and I'm, I just think it's, it's just cute. And I, I have lots of clients that film them un unwrapping the painting and I use that too on my advantage to to share and and the experience of getting the painting is amazing and my best part of what i do is when someone gets the painting and raves about it and calls me and shares and says oh my god i love it this is amazing and that i go to bed and i'm happy i know when i open up my my package from you and you know Sh uh, shasta was there um i was in tears i mean it, it was almost like I, I couldn't call you for for a day because uh -huh. it was it was so special. I, I can't imagine some people being, you know, like what what's those, what's that like when somebody all of a sudden gets a portrait, especially of a deceased dog? Yeah. Um, 
you you must inspire them you must you must some of those phone calls must be very difficult well i can tell you what uh, uh stefan i really found my calling because i am um there's this book called the five languages of love mm -hmm. and my way to express love is by serving i love to uh, get this this feedback and this validation and it's so important to me that people like me and that i do things for them mm -hmm. it's, it's on my dna <laughs> it is these people i do and and painting and talking about the pets and the love and it's all it feeds me it keeps me going every day well i always say i always say that that you know art art is autobiographical if for you it's in that way that your passion your emotion your connection to people is mm -hmm. what your life is i mean i'm just looking at your facebook and it's not about you and your paintings it's about all of the people that you're inspiring the families um, the get-togethers, it's, it's all of that. And that's a beautiful thing about Facebook, uh, the, just the yeah. regular Facebook as opposed to the business accounts. I find that the business accounts for artists is just dull. And, um, I agree. And I think that, you know, I'm looking at your account and I'm seeing all of the interaction that you're having with all of the animals that we would never see in, a, in one of the, the business account Facebook. And, Correct. you know, and, and as I scroll down, I see little hints of your, your children. How many uh, kids do you have? I have three. They're all grown and independent and out. And it's the, the nicest thing just to sit back and watch them succeed and strive and being happy. It's just wonderful. But I was a stay-at-home mom my whole life. I uh, always had these odd jobs on the side because I, I was very always very entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I had a business for 10 years where I had a van and scaffolds and ladders and paint, and I painted murals everywhere. I would drag my kids with me. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't you, do, didn't, awesome. you, didn't you do something on Etsy with little sculptures? That's correct. I had Etsy for a couple of years. I was doing uh, miniatures with... Um, with clay and oh, I can't even remember the name of the thing, but you make it. <laughs> yeah. And I learned that skill too. I was always learning something new. Yeah. That, that's. Do you do you do uh, Etsy now with your paintings? No. No. Have you tried doing any eBay with your paintings? I mean, does every every one of your paintings do they go to clients or do you once in a while do a breed and then say oh i'll throw this this uh, border collie painting onto uh, ebay and see what happens i i have to say stefan i hope i don't sound uh, because i am a very humble person but i don't have time to do anything else but the facebook and the instagram and it's keeping me so busy I have all these commissions coming in. I've been so busy. I don't have time for anything else. But that would be, I don't have any single painting that I can sell aside a custom one. Really? So so pretty much pretty much uh, Instagram and Facebook are your platforms to get clients. Correct. And I obviously also uh, go, I have all these different groups that I post every other week, not every week, because it, it really, I have like, I got so many leads from them that I can spend a whole day answering leads. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very careful to when I post, so I don't get swamped with so many people wanting to ask me questions and I can't answer right there and then yeah um and, how, how many hours do you spend would you say uh, uh, on average uh, on a day where you you have your paintbrush down and you're dealing with office and and marketing and answering emails and stuff um okay i first thing in the morning i do all my marketing when i wake up with my coffee i can be a good hour on that and then uh, at night, when I'm done with my day, well, throughout the day, I'm always looking, mm -hmm. obviously, and I'm posting and so on. So that maybe another 10, 15 minutes per posting, I look and I create and so on. And then every night I, when I sit by the TV, it's maybe 9 p.m., 
Mm -hmm. I will be another hour or two talking to people, helping people with painting questions. I have so many people that reach out to me asking if I can help for them with uh, uh, something that they're painting or, and I do that. I talk to people and I just tell them, you know, do a little critique and a little m motivating, mm -hmm. obviously motivating. Yeah. And trying to steer them on the right direction. This is maybe what you should do here and that. And I, th I think it's so cool when people reach out to me. I love it. And yeah. that's what I do at nights. So probably on the course of the whole day, I will spend two, three hours on the phone just doing marketing and talking to people. Two or three hours of marketing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it does require, it's a full-time job in a way. Yes, you know? yeah, and plus the painting. <laughs> Yeah, and and how, long, how long do you, the I know, so it's like, uh, how, how, how long do you usually spend painting, uh, you know, on average? I know it's not the same every day. Oh, I can paint uh, in average six to eight hours a day. Six to eight hours. And, and those oh, hours yeah. probably go by real fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, after I do my market in the morning, I'm in the studio. Yeah. By nine o'clock. 9 30 at the most i'm painting and I, sometimes i go non-stop to three wow that's really great and then, yeah i paint a lot and then in the afternoon after my break or lunch i go back to the studio and i can paint any time uh, until seven eight nine o'clock sometimes mm -hmm. and my live videos are 7 30 to 8 30 p.m yeah uh, I love it, Stefan. And I take my breaks. I take my coffee break in the afternoon. I take a break at dinner. I cook dinner. Sometimes I spend an hour in the kitchen, mm. have dinner with the husband, go back to the studio because the studio is in my house. Yeah, it's wonderful. I, you know, what was amazing is I was watching this latest uh, video because you, you, you took on taking my new dog, the poodle, um, oh, Sebastian. Yeah. And, and so I, I watched a little bit of that video. I haven't had time to really watch the whole thing yet. And in the background, I hear your, your husband uh, doing something and stuff. I mean, you know, what, what I like about you and what I try to tell my students is don't uh, perfection leads to paralysis. Don't put together a big studio. Don't uh, be precautious and, and, and have some kind of intro or something. I mean, you're just, you're just like, here's my wine. Oh, let me adjust the camera. Oh, Harry, the phone's ringing. You know, it's like everything is, <laughs> everything is just kind of chaotic, but that's the thing though. It is really about getting things out. And I think what was really wonderful about you, you're so real, you know, uh, you're just, you're just, you, you just kind of lay it all out there and you're just a, a wonderful sense of, of possibility. It's just great. I think you're never ready enough. Mm -hmm. The time is now and it's today. Mm -hmm. it and is. if I'm not ready for the video, if my phone is not, I don't care. I want to do it. I want to share with people. I think it's fun. And I, I may not have the best equipment, but it's good enough for now. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember when we were just talking about doing some YouTube videos and I said, just put it up, just do something. Yeah, just do oh, something. Oh, by the way, talking about YouTube videos, I learn how to create my intro and i spent four hours learning i downloaded a few apps and i created my intro oh i'll have and to it go may see it not be the best but i have it <laughs> uh, so so you do have a youtube station i'm going to be um and uh, sharing the links on my youtube videos now because i want to create specific classes i'm really big on color theory i'm really big on fundamentals of art and i want to start sharing the color mixing the color problems and and have little bitty classes and tips for people and that's going to be my next uh plan my youtube videos when are you going to find the time for that i mean with everything else is that crazy Stefan, uh, uh, if there's a will, there's a way. It's was... a little bit every day. The, 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 how you achieve your goals is by working on it a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I put four hours. I didn't paint it, but I created an intro. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to learn how to edit my videos. And, and I put an hour or two. You can. You find Instead yeah. of sitting at the sofa and watching TV, I'm working on my, my video. Yeah, and isn't it kind of fun just to figure it out? I mean, I started doing these podcasts. 
at first they weren't perfect, but I figured, mm -hmm. you know, I was just going to actually take my YouTube videos and just put them into a podcast so people could download them. But I have so many interesting conversations with my coaching students that I thought, you know, um, let me just let me just have people listen in to some of my advice that way. Uh, it's it's a, an easy way for me to to develop content because I'm so busy. I've got almost 90 coaching students and I'm mm -hmm. all the time coaching, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so so but the thing is, you do find the time. I mean, I, I do my YouTube videos. I do now the podcast. Yeah. I have my my yeah. uh, blogs uh, and my emails. Do you send out blogs and newsletters? I don't, uh, even though I have an, a new uh, a, a website and I have a lot of subscribers on my website, but I, I don't focus too much on that. Sometimes I do the, the promotions. Yes, I go in and I do, but, but uh, I'm not focused on that too, too much now. Mm -hmm. so. uh, but Stefan, your podcasts are amazing. I'm loving it. And they look so elegant it's so different from your youtube videos no well, thank you it's still you but it has they have a different um it, it's just a, a wrapping <laughs> it's just yeah it's a little bit more polished and not not quite so uh, it's so cool. uh yeah it's so, so well thank you so so modern too and you know, yeah yeah so <laughs> following the trends <laughs> following the trends yeah you know the thing so many of my students were saying well i'm listening to podcasts while i'm driving and uh painting and i thought you know maybe i need to look into that so i didn't know anything about it i didn't know anything about the podcast thing and lo and behold you know, little by little my first ones were rough and that's the advice that i give students is like just do it. If if do if it. you if you want to get a YouTube station, if, uh, get one because it's really impor uh, important with with Google that you have YouTube because they're they're the same company and also to have Blogger and you can put your videos up. Now you put your videos up on Facebook, isn't that where you have most of your videos downloaded to? Yes, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. And Stefan, podcast is so big. I have been listening to podcasts forever. In fact, I have uh, a, a podcast on YouTube. I was interviewed last December by this number one uh, uh, art podcaster <laughs> for, for Brazil. Really? Brazil. Wow. I recorded, it was like an oh, a whole hour interview in Portuguese on my studio. It was, this was awesome. I was, I was going to go say, man, I should go, go listen to it. I should have listened to it before I, uh, we had our conversation, but I don't speak Portuguese, so it probably oh, wouldn't make so sense. <laughs> be a little hard. <laughs> yeah. So, well, you know, right now, um, we're kind of experiencing a, um, a climate where there's a lot of fear and a lot of people have lost their jobs with this uh, coronavirus that's going around. All of my students have, instead of saying that we are uh, quarantined at home, we're calling ourselves artists in residence. We're home, but we should be artists. And this is a good time for people to kind of reevaluate their art and, you know, maybe look at making a business out of painting in a way. How because we're only like a couple of weeks into this coronavirus thing. Since you're really on the cutting edge of, of being in with people, what what climate are you sensing? Uh, do, have you noticed the people um, not or you know not commissioning you? Uh, has there been a drop in that or? Or have you noticed that even though things are not going well, um, people are still ordering paintings? Uh, actually, I had an increase on orders. Wow. And I heard this woman say the other day on a show, never <laughs> let a crisis go to waste. Mm -hmm. And I think for us artists, now that we are home and everyone else is home, mm -hmm. I'm on it. I'm online much more than before. And people are really, they have time now to look and, and see that you're there. Wow. And so for me, things got better. Wow. 
You're such an inspiration. I mean, isn't it wow? It is wow. You, it, things have changed so much since that first uh, coaching call. Oh my God. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. But I am thankful for you every single day. I admire you so much. I respect you so much. And when I saw that picture of um, <laughs> uh, Sebastian, Sebastian mm -hmm. I was like, no, I have to paint this dog for real. <laughs> I'm, I'm painting him again. Yeah. <laughs> Another dog yeah. for you. And I worked on it today, as a matter of fact. I've been painting when I have some downtime and I, I have the commissions and they're all on my wall and they're drying. Mm -hmm. I love to have like eight paintings going at the same time because I get bored or one is too wet. And then, you know, it needs to sit two, three days until I, I, have, I can look at it again. So it's good to have all these paintings going at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and so I have Sebastian. I work on it today for a little bit. And I have all these other dogs that I like these pictures and I, I will paint them. Yeah. And, and and sometimes I I bump into someone that don't have a big budget or or is struggling with the cash flow. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say, uh, just give me the picture. I'll paint it. I'll do it <laughs> cheaper for you. It's fine. But uh, so that's how it goes. The fun. I'm always painting. Oh. Stefan, how are you feeling? Uh, how how are things with you and and this uh, being locked in? Um, well, you know, the corona, the coronavirus has impacted my business very little. I've had some students that have contacted me and said, you know, I'm, I'm out of work. And I go, well, let's go to work, you know, and, mm -hmm. and refocus mm -hmm. and try to create uh, a new opportunity for them. And a lot of them yeah. are, are kind of nervous with, with, uh, you know, part of it is the reason why I wanted to reach out to you and talk to you is that you're such an inspiration, you know, and, and you're, you're, you're always thinking, you're always, and I use your example a lot. I have a lot of successful coaching students, but mm -hmm. n none that have the kind of energy and flair that you have. Uh, you're just, you're, you know, you're, you might paint dogs, but from what I see, you're really connected to people. And I think that that makes a big difference. And I think in this time where there's so much fear, I think connecting with people is, is the greatest gift of all. And what's amazing with, with your, the way you are, the way you interact with people, is that you might be painting people's dogs, but you're really inspiring people to be bigger and better. And I just, I just you. think you're just amazing. And so I, I, I use your example a lot. I, I mentioned that it's not easy. I remember we're just trying to figure out your hashtags for your Instagram. <laughs> I, I, yeah. And I remember you going, God, I only have a few hundred people. I mean, how am I going to get more and more? How many people follow you now on Instagram? Um, almost 7,000. 7,000. And I remember when it was yeah. like 700, you know. Oh, my God, I know. I know. Uh, it's like, you... hmm? And and when and Facebook, I had like five hundred, and mm -hmm. they, those were like my close friends. Yeah. And then you said you need to be with, you need to have five thousand, and mm -hmm. and now I got it. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm, and then you start getting really picky about who you start liking when you get towards the end there. Yeah, it's like yeah. all of a sudden you start going, I don't know. You start looking at, I mean, I don't, not that many people get five thousand followers. And at that point, you, you really start going, should I friend this person or not? Are they really worth you know, having one? You know, because you reach that 5,000, what are you going to do then? You know, I really wish that they would raise that. But I, I don't know why they limit that. But um, you're such a, a wonderful energy. And I, it doesn't surprise me that people are reaching out to you during this time of crisis. A lot of my students are, are, are fearful. And I go, you know what? Now's the time. And I always ask people when they first start coaching, they, I always ask them, and I think I asked you too, it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. you know? And then it's mm -hmm. like, isn't it about time now that you, you be that? And it's, it is. It is a shift. It's a shift that you have to make. But you have to have tenacity and you have to have discipline. Desire to be an artist, that doesn't get you anywhere. You know, uh, everybody who calls me desires to, to, to be an artist. 
I mean, even if you don't paint, you desire it because after all, it's it's the easy A in high school, and you know we all drink and you know carouse around and have all this rep reputation of we all desire that. It isn't it isn't that glamorous. It it, it is a full time job. You have to work at it. You have to work yes. at your and the thing is, we live in an, in an era right now where uh, social media is your gallery. I mean, there, yes. there would be no way that you could have this energy, no way that you would have these commissions if you were involved with a gallery. Uh, Stefan, you told me once about the, the pianist or someone that plays the piano and has to practice all day and has nothing to show off at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And when you paint and when you're an artist, I keep telling people, practice the god darn canvas mm -hmm. and then throw it away. Don't save anything or or display it like it's a masterpiece. Yeah. You need to practice and you need to pl uh, uh, paint every day and you need to try things and color combinations. And I have lots of canvases that, let me try this black with this blue and this this. It's all in the trash can. I don't even, I can't store things. And, yeah. And so I think that sometimes people uh, paint the canvas and, and they want to, oh, uh, you know, or they're afraid to even try things. Yeah. And I, I keep telling them, try for God's sake. Put the paint down, make a mark, experiment. And if it's crap, you can either start over or when the canvas is totally ruined because you put 10 coats of paint <laughs> throw it in the trash can you know start fresh yeah uh, you know i remember i remember when you first were doing these pet portraits because you know you, you just didn't fall the butter side up you worked at this and i remember you would send me paintings and i would go uh virginia um well, yeah. what what are you thinking you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? Um, because because, you know, there were odd color combinations and, you know, and I kind of told you, look, you've got to stay pretty close to what the clients want and don't go off into, you know, these things. That's There's, right. And That's and right. I remember. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So but I tell you, I just I just think you are you're an inspiration. I think if people want to become artists, they should take your example and just do it. Just do it. Get onto Facebook, get on Instagram, um, and really connect with people because that's what art is. And it's autobiographical. You're living this life. You're, you're being part of it. And it's not something that is an easy A. Uh, you work and, at this. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And one more thing, don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen in a month mm -hmm. or two or three. This is a every single day, little steps towards. And then after a year or two, you're going to go, holy cow, look at that. Yeah. It's happening. I know. It's you just... cannot drop the ball. <laughs> no. And there are, there are hard times. You know, you will, you will sometimes sit there and go hello anybody out there pay attention but uh you have to still have that tenacity you still have to get yes. on instagram you still have yeah. to do that and it's not that complicated it's more being persistent yeah and you have to focus on the positives for example if one day is a slow day and nothing happens and i'm feeling oh my gosh people don't love me anymore there's always wine yeah, there's always wine. That's right. Um, and and you know, the, and and like you said, that works. and and how wonderful your studio must be. You know, you go in there, you you pour a glass of wine, and you have all of these wonderful personalities uh, sitting there waiting for you to work on. Like you said, you you look up on the wall and you see, you know, your friends, and and you'll reach up and and pull down one of your friends and, and start painting on it for a bit. And then you look over and you see another one and you keep, I mean, what a better place to be, especially if you're isolated right now with this coronavirus. Um, what a, what a wonderful place to be in your studio. I know. And Stefan, it is so funny because I haven't really noticed the change. 
I never leave my house and I, now I still don't leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, artists in residence. I mean, you know, that's just, it's I just know, a thing. Exactly. Well, and so obviously when I go to the grocery store, it's just a little more emptier. Yeah, but it's also an but opportunity that's for. How I do you ever do you ever like uh, run up to somebody that has a really awesome dog and just say, "Oh, I paint portraits. Here's my brochure." I do. Yes. So you're I always do. you're always looking for the next client, even if it's just on I'm Facebook always, or Instagram. Yes. Yeah. 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 If if you're three feet from someone, you can sell. Yeah. Yeah. And I it, always have my business cards with me. I talk to people. I see someone with a dog. I just like, oh, oh my gosh, how beautiful! Look, I paint dogs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're amazing, and you're an inspiration. And I thank you for taking out some some uh, time to talk to me, uh, share really share your valuable. It, yeah, it's always a joy talking to you. Well, thank you so I'm much. I'm so flattered that you decided to give me a call. Love it. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm reminded by you every day I open up my Facebook and Instagram there you are so it was like <laughs> <laughs> of course you're you're part of my life and I'm and I'm really proud of your success and I wish you more and more success um Thank and you. uh constantly just be the bearer of light and the wonderful personality you are you're just amazing Thank you so, so much, Stefan. Likewise. Thank you. You too. Okay, mm -hmm. you take care. Have a wonderful day. So there you have it. What an interesting interview with Virginia Lago. If you'd like to get more information about her paintings, you can do so by logging on to her website, www.virginialagoart.com. That's virginialagoart.com. And there you can see more of her work. If you'd like to get more information on me and these podcasts, you can do so at www.stephanbauman.com. And there you can register for a free book, Everything You Need to Know About Landscape Painting. You can also get information about my workshops and also my videos on YouTube. If you'd like to get more information about getting personal coaching, there's information on my website, or you could just pick up a phone and give me a call at 415-606-9074. And yes, I do answer my own phone. And that is my personal cell phone, so you can get directly to me. So until then, keep your brushes wet and remember to always paint with passion. Till next time, have a good day. And don't forget to subscribe.